Hello gamers. We are getting close to the end. I'm gonna be doing this one a long one if I have to, because I'd like to get this over with, so we can get onto modded playthroughs. But for now, for the more or less vanilla, besides a few quality of life mods, we've not got much left. And so if I can, I'm just gonna do one big session where I get everything done. So first of all, let's restore that, because we can. And now we're going to look at what we've got left. So, the Tritachion Crisis, that's the first thing that's coming up soon. Uh, then we're going to have to deal with a couple more, no, just one more Hegemony Inspection. And the Sindrian Dictat Crisis. And that's it. Then it's over. Well, that's all of the crises. Uh, then the last thing we need is the Unique Bounty. Which, unfortunately, he's just not offering right now. So, that's going to be down to RNG. I'm just going to have to get lucky. In the meantime, maybe I should actually do this whole mission with the with the shrines. Because I've never done this before. I don't actually know what happens with it. I'm sure it's mostly going to be lore rather than big sector-altering events. But that should still be interesting. Especially for people who haven't seen it before, like myself. Alright, let's uh, dump that because we don't need it. Let's see. I've got... I've got a couple story points, so why not toss on something useful here? Right, let's drop that for a second. Let's get efficiency overhaul, because this thing, this thing could use it. Out of all of the logistics ships, this one uses up a lot of supplies for what it does. It's a maintenance of 15 compared to the 10 for an Atlas or a Prometheus, while having worse cargo and fuel capacity. I mean, obviously you're paying for the phase field here, but because of that, you get a lot of benefit out of S-Money Efficiency Overhaul. Alright, so, that's that. I think the fleet's fine. It's time to move on. Wait, okay, hold on. Grab fuel first. Let's just load up on that. Excellent. And now let's get out of here. It's time to do a little tour of what the sector has to offer. Shrine of Kila. You mean a place where nobody lives? That's interesting. It's not even inhabited. It's not even inhabited. And yet there's a shrine there. I wonder what the story is with that. Hmm. A random Colossus with a lot of food. I sure hope nobody needed that because it's mine now. And that's one of those beginner bounties. It's not very interesting to me at this point. Alright. Vague IR readings from otherwise unremarkable terrain hint at camouflaged habitation beneath the regolith. There are definitely survivors hiding inside Kila, though no organized polity maintains open relations with the greater sector. And if the slagged halls of tramp freighters are any indication, the locals aren't very welcoming. Your shuttle descends towards the surface of Kila, following the landing beacon to an ancient lava sea peppered with craters. Tactical systems log the brief ping of targeting radar, but the signature suggests a handheld system too crude to pose a threat to your countermeasures. The landing site is far from any obvious ruins or landmarks. There's just a smear of crumbling temporary halves and cold, broken transports. Your shuttle comes to rest on the landing pad, easily easing softly into the microgravity. The wreckage and debris is not so chaotic as it seemed from orbit. A swarm of dusty footprints lead toward an airlock buried in an, escarp an, escarpment, an escarpment some distance away. It appears that others have been using this site in the cycle since the war's devastation. Uh, let's try an active scan first. Your census officer performs an active scan of the area from your fleet as you wait on the landing pad. Your data pad barely flickers as one of the powerful beams sweeps your position. Your data pad pings the result as it comes in. There are low density voids beneath the surface. Artificial density patterns. Caves or bunkers or tunnels. Ferric and non-ferric metals. Some EM activity, some radioactivity. It reads about as standard as any report you've seen involving the smear and scatter of ruined human civilizations across the Persian sector. The trail of footprints beckons you forward 
beckons you toward what looks like an airlock embedded in a nearby escarpment. All right, that's, I think that's the same, yeah. You follow the path laid by others to the airlock. The manual controls allow you to pull it open to reveal a yawning black hole. There is no interior atmosphere, at least none to speak of. Ghostly veils of dust flex and twist in the electrostatic fields of the shrine. Strong enough to overcome the low gravity of this world to hang in the near vacuum. Instructions are given by some unnamed Luddic priest who recites his words into crude repeaters awoken by your activity. Come only in peace. Let the rest let the let rest the dead. We pray now in words revealed to Lud. The ossuary is built from buried hulls, roughly welded in chaotic but not artless architecture. The surface is quite level, and the original faded, crumbling icons and lettering belie forgotten functions, crew quarters, attachment point, purge before cycling. Ah, yeah, this is one that, this is the piece of artwork that was in the blog post about this mission. Probably inf inspired by, like, those... Uh, those uh, churches in France that have like just, I'm not sure wait, are they in France? I think they were where they just have like catacombs filled with bones it's very spooky stuff now it would be real spooky if they had a trumpet too in the gloom you begin to make out empty sockets, rib cages, countless femurs and spines they cluster in recesses, corners, and stowage spaces with hatches removed. You realize that the dust in the air comes from the bodies, the bones, slowly come crumbling around you. The unknown priest's words fill the radio channels, made warbly and tinny by the low power of the repeaters. Fell from orbit like burning leaves, caught by wind and wailing. Life breath stolen from mother and child. A dead suit's indicator blink from gray-black to green. It steps towards you. You instinctively pull back, hand on your sidearm. The figure pauses, adjusts something on its battered suit, and the helmet switches on its self-illumination. Its hands sign a channel ID, which you flick to. We have few visitors, says the same voice as the broadcast prayers, rough with age and disuse. So this is what passes for the local curate, Sacraria. What's with this spooky show? That would be a funny option. Let's just say I'm walking the pilgrim's path. The curate makes a sound in his throat, acknowledgement. You catch a glimpse of, a glimpse of sad, dark eyes. Then you walk with me. Come, a dark path. Company is welcome. He turns and walks without hesitation into the folds of ruin. Moving deeper between rooms and hulls, you witness galleries for the dead. Bones and skulls carefully and artfully piled. You catch a glimpse now and then of pilgrims in ones and twos by their active vac suit indicators. The curate leaves them to their com contemplations. They are forgotten. All forgotten, turned to dust by war. But I will remember that they once were. It is all that I have to give. And you will remember them now, too. And they, then they shall live eternal. You understand. They will never be forgotten. Yes. Yes. He says again, and you can hear the smile in his voice. Then, without a word, he disappears into some shadowy corridor. You are left among the dead. The webs of ash hanging in the air twitch and flow as movement elsewhere in the labyrinth triggers minor fluctuations in the standing electrostatic charge. Stay a while. You stay a while in the ossuary of Kila. The hollow eyes keep silent vigil. Almost said Virgil. There is no storm approaching, unfortunately, so I don't think that fits. Stacks and wings and arches and forests of human bone adorn every surface. 
The dust flux pulses slowly, like the breath of a titanic creature. And then we return. You leave the dead in their tombs within the battered crust of the lifeless moon below. The flight in your return shuttle is uneventful. That's a decent chunk of XP. Well, at least for the early game. Actually, if you just do that right away, wouldn't that just be an easy and quick way to get to level 2? Relatively speaking. Because getting from level 1 to level 2 takes 50,000, and I think that was... I think it was... 40, it says something like 40,000 baseline. But then again, there was bonus XP involved. So, um... Maybe it was only, like, less than that. Like, 20,000. It said 60,000 in the green part and, like, 40,000 in the yellow part, I believe. But it doesn't quite make sense. Especially since, at max level, bonus XP is supposed to multiply by 4. So I'm not sure that those numbers add up. Oh well. So uh, apparently we're not d too popular with you guys. Ah, inhospitable. Well, maybe we can fix that. I don't have any uh, cores. Of course. That's right. Well, let's just go to the, the shrine because apparently they can't stop me. With a flash of official iconography, instructions are returned from the Orbital Navigation Service, which attempts to track the innumerable human-made artifacts of the Volturnian Sea. Floating habitats, sprawling farm envelopes, transient mining platforms, and even ancient-style seafaring vessels. Your shuttle pierces the atmosphere in a long descent arc, politely sh slowing to under the speed of sound as it approaches a bank of thick fog illuminated by Esconia's primary. What at first looks like the, an ethereal castle is revealed by proximity to be a dismal, jostling accretion of barges, parasi parasited to a retired extraction rig. Using the word parasite as a verb is an interesting choice. A shifty official meets your shuttle on the landing pad. Behind him, you spot temporary weapon emplacements and shield modules stamped with the crest of the Sindrian Dictat. Pale conspirate Conscripts in battered armor eye you warily as they suck down narcotic smoke. The official produces a trembling facsimile of a smile and looks you up and down. Uh, uh, pilgrim, are you? Uh, I'm afraid the shrine is closed today and tomorrow. Security concerns. The situation has been unstable. I mean, that would be, I suppose the easy way to do it. I do have a story point, and I'm not really worried about running from battles. So let's let's use it today. Let's just do that. Or hmm, maybe this will actually come up at other shrines where I want to use a story point to do something. Yeah, instead I could do a local a donation. The data pad appears in the official's hand and he looks squinting to get a read on you. Are you a plant from the internal security? A terrorist infiltrator? The options weigh on his face against his greed. It's no contest. Yeah, of course not. A thousand credits? My goodness. A thousand credits for a story point? That's no contest, really. Uh, oh, oh, it is so difficult. The terrorists strike without warning at women and children. Oh, I am thankful for the lion. A lesser man would simply bombard this planet into submission. But the supreme executor, these are his children, and he, he is like a father. But even a father only has so many resources at his disposal. Why, if we had the credits to purchase better armor for our brave young soldiers, imagine how their mothers would feel if they were hurt by a terrorist bomb. Would a thousand credits be enough? 5,000 credits. 5k, done. It's a deal. Excreting a wet smile, offering his data pad for your payment confirmation. Sure. With the bribe transfer, the official nods and leads you through the security checkpoint while making obsequious small talk. Add attention! 
He screams, setting the conscripts into a flurry of activity, dropping narcotic sticks and grabbing firearms. Satisfied, the official gives a wave and the thrum of heavy motors winding up preludes the doors of the shrine cracking open just enough to allow your entrance. The receiving hall is empty of pilgrims and mostly dark. Hansoon banners hang limply, their bright colors muted in the gloom. Benches and tables lay empty. You spot a light through the, a small doorway, the humble office of the curate's secraria, and within, an old woman asleep behind a pot of tea, still steaming, set out on the desk. If the tea is that hot, you can't really be asleep. Hmm, I'm torn. Do I want to be clever or do I want to be polite? Both are very good options. I think we'll go with... I think polite is winning out today. Let's be polite. Wake her up unobtrusively. As you step in, she opens her eyes and after getting a good look, withdraws a pistol from where she held it under her mantle of hand weave and places it in a holster. I could hardly shoot someone trying to be so polite about sneaking up on an old woman. I'm a pilgrim come for the shrine. I am here to see the shrine. Then, I am here to show you to it. Simon, you may also put your gun away. You turn to look and Simon does as she asks, giving you an apologetic little half salute. The curate smiles, and with open hands, shows you the way to the inner shrine. Not quite an hour later, you find yourself at the bottom of the sea, in the Lytic Shrine of Volturn. It is creaking and unnervingly, unnervingly humid inspection mod module at the bottom of a modified extraction stack. A metal proboscis thrust into the depths of Volturn. It is also filled with guns, explosive grenades, cell mags. Crates and racks are piled high, making the small space more cramped. A small shrine is set in an open space under a round diamond matrix viewport, which holds back a titanic mass of water. A few candles struggle to maintain even a decent flicker among the ranks of their dead comrades. There are pilgrims here, of a sort. Their unwashed bodies smell of sweat and smoke. They speak and pray quietly. The curate Secraria relights a candle from one that is burning and offers one for you to do the same. This seems to confirm your part in the insurgency. This is a troubling arsenal. Look out the window for a moment. Specks float on blue-black like stars in space and the light cast out into the crushing depths. It is an almost unsettling wrongness from a familiar image. Motes of something or other flick to and fro. Motes? Motes? Did somebody say? It's probably not related. Life prevails even here under unthinkable oppression. Let us be thankful, too, for the ingenuity granted to us by Providence. See, we do not hate all technology. It seems to confirm your part of the insurgency. I've made a believer of you. Good. What does the church think of it? The church is not of one mind, but the body of many brought together in council. Some support our work here with zeal, and some are content merely to pray. I, however, pray that the united face of the church might not turn from witnessing our suffering. Lud wept unblinking, it is said, that the fathers and mothers of our church would do the same. I'm going to light the candle. So the torch is passed. Light of flame. Light of faith. Or it's just a candle. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't want to go all the way into a full Luddic conversion. But I think it's fair to say it's more than just a candle. The Numa lives in these words. She's staring sadly, you think, at the candles before you. 
I guess I could say this before leaving. This is a troubling arsenal. The curate frowns. What troubles you about it? <laughs> the lack of heavy weapons. How you fight armored targets. Okay, that's a pretty based option. That's kind of like, hmm, it's troubling. You don't have enough. Bring in more guns. I'm sure that she would say something about how they actually, how they would love to have that, but they can't actually, that's just not practical. That's probably where that goes. How about, is this not a religion of peace? Is this is a shrine? Is it not a sacred place? The book does tell us Blessed are the peacemakers, yet peace does not make itself. Lud was, Lud was no war maker, but Lud knew how to fight. By self-sacrifice, by martyrdom, did not, did not Lud deliver victory? This is rhetoric to you, perhaps, but to me it is more simple. I will not let more of my flock be taken to the minds of Cruor as sacrifice to some tin pot Lucifer. Are you part of the Ludic Path? No, not at all. She gives you a look of some disgust. I am a curate of the Church of Galactic Redemption. What I do and what they do are very different. I hope, I truly hope, you can see that. I admit there has been some contact. Each day is a test. I pray we do not stray too far from Lud. Gain 72... Oh, okay, that's what's going on. 72,000 total, and 75% of it was from bonus XP. That's the way that that works. Okay. That makes more sense than what I remembered before. And I did, in fact, gain a story point. Now we can leave. Alright, let's remove that from the list. We'll head over to you. Yeah, we can just bang these out real quick. That's great. Tritachion Crisis won't even spawn by the time we're done. Actually, it's kind of thematically fitting. We're about to be attacked and raided by Tritac as we're visiting the Ludic Shrines. It's almost like that was intentional. I mean, it wasn't, but it's almost like it was. Originally a research platform established by the Domain Explorarium, funding was only ever a trickle in light of little hope for practical knowledge to be gained from study of Cumerian signal life. Post-collapse, administration was usurped by a particularly inspired Ludic curate errant, and the station turned into a site of holy pilgr pilgrimage for Ludic believers. Only a handful of approved scholars are allowed aboard now, though there are a few enough of those in this troubled age. The landing bay is filled with parties of Ludic pilgrims, many dressed in traditional hand weave, meeting the subcurates. An attendant looks you over suspiciously and inquires about what business you have coming here. Visit the shrine. The attendant receives your request with only the subtlest disapproval. To your surprise, a subcurate approaches to escort you to the shrine's viewing chamber. A vast, dim gallery opens upon a hundred meter diamond plate window allowing a full view of the glory of Kumariaru. Here, pilgrims quietly contemplate the miracle of creation, taking in the sublime and terrible beauty of the gas giant looming below. Storm systems the size of standard terrestrial worlds churn with slow majesty, interlit with violet with green violet sheet lightning, teeming with xenolife. Does something incomprehensible look up from the lee of a dark but cloud bank? at the bright point in that alien sky. Oh, that was it. That was... That was easy compared to the other ones. Quite quick. And it does seem like the XP actually scales up as you visit more of the shrines. Because the last one was 72,000 total. This is 20,000 total. So if I had to guess, if you start visiting them around level 1, you'd probably need to visit all of them to reach level 2. Would that actually be worth it? That's questionable. Make an offering. Sure. 
You inquire with the subcurate about the possibility of contributing to the maintenance of this holy site. With a warm smile, the subcurate explains that an offering of 10 units of supplies would do much to assist the church in the, its observance of its sacred duties. Sure. Let's go with that. Oh, we were at inhospitable. Wait, if I keep doing this, does that... Okay. You made a contribution recently, so providing another at this time might be viewed as an unseemly act of pride. Makes sense. I was hoping to spam that to get our reputation up, but obviously they would think of that. Of course. Let's get out of here. So I'm going to have to stack up some AI cores and hopefully... Yeah, we've got three of them are inhospitable. Okay. It's worse than I thought. We've got cooperative, cooperative, neutral, and then three are inhospitable. Actually, it's a bit weird that... I mean, it does make sense that the Lytic Path is next to the Lytic Church, somewhat. But also, in terms of their mechanics, they're closer to the pirates. So it would also make sense if they were... if the path and the pirates were kind of separated. Like, both arrangements kind of make sense. I just... just hmm. Whether you organize them by ideology or by mechanics. Alright. Volcanic world? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, this is actually the first time I've been in the system. I'm discovering the gate. Okay, let's see what we've got. Take a shuttle to visit the shrine. You're just beginning to make your way towards the shuttle bay when you receive a ping from your nav officer. The request to land has been denied by traffic control. Strange. This should be perfectly routine. Request to speak with someone with authority. And a young-looking Luddic knight, or maybe an initiate, appears before you. Blessed for this day, Captain. With apologies, your request to land has been denied. Apologies, Captain. I mean, respectfully, I... The Excubator Orbis wishes to speak with you. Transferring link. Captain Paul Bingus. He says by way of greeting, a stern gaze already fixed on you. The moment draws longer. He's the image of poise, perfectly content to wait for you to speak. A wrinkle appears, then disappears, by a mouth which appears to be permanently fixed on the precipice of a frown. What if I just wait it out? It says he, it says he would wait for me to speak first. I'm curious. Let's just wait it out. The silence extends, uncomfortably. He blinks, slowly. He's really doing this. Some kind of test or challenge. Are you going to let him win? He isn't giving up. He continues to stare, absurdly saying nothing. You notice the subtlest flicker in the image as the display corrects for signal fluctuation. I don't think that's signal fluctuation. I think that his face is flickering. Keep strong. Keep silent. The hum of your ship grows in your ears. The sense of inhabiting your own body in a can hurtling around a gravity well. The incomprehensible webs of influence keeping you both in this place and in the constant dyna dynamism of crisis. Lower and higher dimensions twist and vibrate. A web conspiring to hold you up, or back, falling and clinging just so. Your technologies tap into these invisible quirks of physics to keep you warm, to keep your fleet on the ground, to keep the airflow following a rhythm, a meter. It's like music, in fact, if you listen carefully. It would be impossible to speak now. You almost jump as the, exec as the Exubitor Orbis speaks pulling you back to the moment. You possess patience. I did not expect it of you. You've won. Is this victory? It is an uncomfortable feeling. I ordered your landing request denied. The protecting of this world is my duty. I find that those with a history of exceptional acts oft test the charity of providence by taking exceptional risks. 
So I need to convince you. I mean, the church doesn't generally tithe you. It's always the pathers. And I think, yeah, this, is, and this isn't a path world. So I need to convince you I'm not a risk. <laughs> the, that wrinkle again, the sector's smallest smile. Spend not your time in this life on folly. Even our youngest initiate could see that you wear risk like a badge. The secular procedures at hand are only part of my purview. At present, I am more concerned with your spirit. I am uninterested in more words. Listen well now, for I speak my judgment on this matter. Your reputation is suspect, Captain. I cannot in good conscience allow you to access our shrine. Find yourself redemption. If you manage to find some degree of it, then we may discuss this matter again. Seek virtue, Captain. How about we talk about redemption now? Okie dokie. Hmm. So he likes patience. I feel like it would be a bad idea to just go back right now. He specifically mentioned patience. That seems like that's important. Alright, I can't buy anything, of course. Let's go activate this gate. How long has this got? Not much. Excellent. Nah, that's not interesting. Convoy. Probe. Well, we've already done both motherships, so there's not really any point in hunting down these probes. That is some cash. That is some money. Hmm. Maybe I just need to wait? I don't know, that feels kind of odd. I vaguely remember something in the blog post where it says... I think it said something like you need to to wait to impress somebody. But it's been a very long time since I read that. I yeah, let's let's just try waiting like a like a week. I think that's what it said. And then we'll try and we'll just see if that works. We'll go like March 9th. I mean he did specifically say cares about patience and it's not like I'm about to be converted over to the Lytic path not that I would even know how I mean there were definitely points during some of the shrine visits where you could say like oh I am part of the path you could fully commit I wonder if that would affect it maybe it would maybe it wouldn't it's hard to say mining completed excellent excellent so now this means that the Oh no, it doesn't produce enough? Really? Oh, come on. So what you're telling me is I actually have to put an alpha core here in order to meet the local need for transplutonic ore for the refinery. All right, let's go, let's go home. We'll take this gate, we'll go do that right now. And then we'll come back and we'll go straight to the shrine. And hopefully that works. But yes, once we get that, once we get to meet that transplutonic need locally, then that's a direct line from the dirt to the refinery. Where am I going? It's a direct line from the dirt to the refinery to the hypershun tap, so that cannot be disrupted, and we don't have to worry about a minus five stability hit. Oh, and I, someone did actually have a good idea, which was I could put the wormhole in Ibrazil. Since I go to Ibrazil a lot, putting a wormhole there is actually a kind of a reasonable choice. I don't know what you guys think you're doing, but you definitely do not have a chance here. Yeah, let's drop all this stuff off. Yeah, I'm just carrying these around. I could put that... I could put one anchor in Ibrazil and one in my other my other system that I've colonized. 
And so I could just gate over to that system and then wormhole to Ibrazil instead of going to the gates next to Ibrazil and then going to hyperspace. I think that would be a, save a little bit of time for each trip. It's definitely an option. It's worth considering. Yeah, we'll take this out. Sign that. Boom. Okay. Look at look at that. That's just beautiful. The thing we're missing is organics at this point because I'm I don't produce any of those. I will once I will once Outlander's Paradise gets up to size six. I'm not going to keep Lytic Majority. I'm just going to use it to bootstrap the colony up to size six. So then I'll build a mine, get that plus to organics, and that'll fill everything. But other than that, yeah, it's just... its In fact, it meets almost all of it by itself. Forget the rest of the colonies. It's almost entirely meeting it by itself. Wow. And I mean, this will be done... Like, once it gets up to size 6, then it'll meet this by itself. It'll start producing organs, which it'll meet by itself. So both of these will be covered. And it'll just be luxury goods, domestic goods, food, and organics that it has to import. Just those four. Everything else will be produced locally. That's pretty impressive. Well, I can get enough alpha cores to slap in them into like ground defenses. And speaking of, might as well upgrade to heavy batteries. Get even get even bigger number. Not that it matters, but I can do that. So I'm going to. Now get some extra cash. It's time to show off. All right. Let's get out of here before we get into a pointless fight. You guys can't do nothing to me. Can't even touch me. Get out of here. I'm letting you off easy. You should. You better. You better count your lucky. You thank your lucky stars. God, I love how they're still chase like they they chase after you even though you're clearly using the gate system. I sh I forgot to buy fuel while I was back home. I mean, it's fine. I can just hop over to the nearest system and grab fuel there. Just a little inconvenient. But all right, let's do this. Let's go visit the shrine again. Okay, so this has spawned. Where is it? I'm confused. Where There should be some kind of crisis, right? Military? Tritachion Mercy. There it is. It doesn't get... That should really be put into the important tab automatically. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we'll kill this. Attacking forces are likely comprised of nine fleets. That's quite a lot. Defending fleets are outmatched, and the mercenary attack is likely to find success. Notoriously flexible in their allegiances. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Flexible allegiances. Ka-ching, ka-ching. If you, you hear in the subtext on that one, you might be able to buy them over. Interesting. So they're making their preparations around Nortia. 18 days until departure. That's just fine. I'll be able to do the remains of this quest and then go intercept them. That should be easy enough. And then once I've intercepted them, I believe you have to go negotiate with your contact. Give me executor, excubitor, Orbis on comms. Captain Paul Bingus. He seems determined to make you speak first. Tell me to find redemption. Yes, and I see no indication that you have found it. Because you are, <clears throat> because you are an unacceptable risk. You choose sin after sin, and your bestrayed path will lead to sin sixfold once again. 
Lud declared that none are beyond redemption. So I give thanks that it is the all-forgiving creator who is to judge your soul, not I. Okay, well, um, never mind. That did not do anything. And I guess I need to do something, but maybe it's just that our reputation with the church is too low. That's probably what it is. Now that I think about it. And that seems like the obvious thing. But I was, for some reason, assuming that there would be something specific I would have to do to earn redemption. But it could just be as simple as, get your reputation up, nerd. Which, fair enough. Ironically, the best way to do that is to be getting some AI, my hands with some AI cores and just dumping them to the church. Here you go. Have some shiny blueberries. You'll love them. And you'll love me afterwards. That's the way the... That's just how Mafia works. I don't make the rules. It is what it is. Alright. Give me some fuel. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. There we go. Dump that. Dump that. Pick that back up. We'll do 25. Uh-huh. Pick up 150. Excellent. Excellent. All right, let's get out of here. Okay, well, if I'm going to do... The first, I guess I'm going to be doing this first. Then I'm going to be visiting Rayon. Probably setting up Wormhole in his system. Estimate two days until departure. Yeah, this is just lining up perfectly in terms of timing. And then I'll come back and try to finish the church quest once I... I do have a lot of alpha cores, so if I don't want to farm anything, I could just directly use alpha cores. Just, you know, pull them out of my colonies and dump them on the church. It doesn't... It does not feel good to do that. Because alpha cores are just very good. But it does save me the time and effort of trying to farm more cores, which I don't really feel the need to do. I don't really feel like obligated to do that. Yeah, there's Tactostar Light Detachment. Tactostar Assault Detachment. So it says tons of fleets. Many of these fleets appear to be quite small, but it seems like they do have S mods and some pretty good ship selection. We're seeing Aurora, Medusa, Omen, Doom. They're splitting up quite a lot. So I guess I'll just end up taking them like one at a time. Yeah, this is... Uh, they're splitting up of their own accord. I didn't even have to do anything there. Yeah, I don't think that was the best strategy on their part. I actually kind of wanted to face them all. But it like they're they're all going off and they're branching out like the submunitions of a hydra. They're, they're splitting off in every direction, and I I'm gonna have to chase them down. So might as well catch them while they're still in reach instead of trying to lure them all together and potentially failing. That would be annoying. Especially since I don't actually have the fuel to chase them down right now. Just didn't think that would be an issue. I thought that they would be closer together and that I could just, you know, round them all up very easily. Seems like that is not the case. Now, as much as the Harbinger has some issues AI-wise, you need to be careful. Its system can be quite dangerous. All right, let's go hunt this guy, because that'll be easier. There we go. That light, paper-thin armor that we both have, you're easy fodder for a cryoblaster. And that Harbinger is looking 
A little spooky, so let's do this. Oh, and I flamed out, of course. My bad. Let's just uh, ignore that. It's not my problem anymore. It's the AI's problem. Is that triple heavy blaster? I don't know why, but some loadouts in this game just stack up heavy blasters to the point that it doesn't make any sense. Like there's one, like in the simulator, the, the Medusa variant that's there has double heavy blaster. And it has, it, actually it has a total of 2,000 flux generation a second. It's completely ridiculous. It's, like that's a lot for a legion or an hunt. Well, I mean, it's about average for an hunt, really, but for a legion, that would be a lot. Let alone a Medusa. Like, damn. Yeah, you're gonna have to run from a Cryoblaster. That's not good for you. Yeah, you're just gonna sit in, into faint face space until you are forced back out and you lose. Unfortunate. Sucks to suck. Yep. Should have seen that coming. Right, let's finish you. You're next on the chopping block. Excellent. And that's over. There's just a few. Yeah, let's just pursue that. Recover. I could recover a Doom. Not that I need one. Excellent. Okay. Okay, so they... This one is going right in the correct direction. The other ones have scattered in every other direction. I, okay, I guess we're just kind of fighting you individually instead of in a more interesting way. And they've got a Paragon, but even then I don't feel like I need my own Paragons. It's not even bonus XP for this, I was kind of expecting it to be a little more challenging. But no, they're all just splitting off. It is nice how they different fleets kind of take different approaches. The Tritachion fleet uses a... Well, it uses obviously Tritachion ships, but they're kind of like going with a high quality over quantity. Where each of the fleets are small with lots of Asimods and, I assume, high-level officers. As opposed to some of the other fleets, going a little more for quantity. Like, the Persian League had quantity, although the... it seems like the, the commanding fleet fleet that was in charge also had S-Mods, but most of the fleets didn't. Oh, that's a lot of Sabos. Let me just uh, take a little break. Yeah, they've got a single Paragon, which, you know, could be an issue in theory. Let's see what it's got. Uh, two auto pulses. It's got a single tachyon lance. If it had more tachyon lances, I'd be more worried about it. With uh, lots of little frigates that care about that. But nah, it's kind of a non-issue really. Let's do that. Just attack them. We, we've already got the, ca the capture points, and I doubt that's gonna doubt they're gonna be able to do much about that. Yeah, bye-bye. You can drop those in front of me if you like. It's not going to mean much. Oh, wow. I was expecting it to phase, but it didn't even have to. Got shot down. Yeah, I'm kind of a Tempest worst nightmare right now. Good night. I'm just going to flank you and pretend that you don't exist. 
All right, it's manually controlling the cryo blaster, which is not what I want. All right, let's uh, so let's not die here. You know, let's leave ourselves a nice margin for error. All right, let's get actually you going this direction instead. Nicely done. Omens have already started flanking. That's what I like to see. Okay, why is the auto fire for the cryo blaster attacking the wrong ship? Come on, there we go. And yep, yeah, and I flanked out, of course. You know, I, j I just clipped him. Come on, I just clipped him. It was it wasn't even a big hit. It was a little hit. That just feels unfair. Yeah, you guys can claim his soul. From this poor paragon. Where are all your friends? They're gone. They disappeared. Isn't that a shame? It's not even... F are you? Have you just given up? You didn't even fire your autopulse at me when I was in front of you. Like, you good? Do you need to take a day off? Man, that's rough. Overload, but lived. So it's fine. Oh, wow. That's just rude. Can we actually catch that? Well, first of all, full assault. Then we tell everybody to go kill. You know, I, I assume full assault means go forward and not backwards. Yeah, I don't have the best... Yeah, no, let's not do this. Let's leave it be. Pursue. Send three of them. Still escaped. Impressive. Alright, there's more of you, I believe. I am going to need more fuel, though. So let's drop in. Alright. Take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. You can have this. Did I accidentally just buy a bunch of crew? What happened? That is not what I meant to do. Alright, let's get out of here. Hopefully I can just use the gravity slingshot. No, I don't think I'm in a good position to do that. I might have to use a gate. Yeah, we'll head over to Black Emperor. Yeah, let's drop over at Thule. Go Black Emperor, and then we should be able to intercept them from there. Yeah, this is a little weird, though. I assumed that they would be clumped up and then I could fight them all at once, but they kind of... They just went all over the place. Almost like they didn't even want to fight me. Right, I probably should have used Transverse Jump to go just drop straight onto that planet. Man, that White Dwarf is a, like... 15 times larger than the White Dwarf in... What system is it? Megek. Like, this one is just tiny. This one is like the size of a normal sun. What's with that discrepancy? It's a bit odd, don't you think? It's almost like one of them isn't even a White Dwarf. I think it's pretending. Okay, so we want to be more over here. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they're just in time. Attack to start light detachment. So, yeah, this actually looks relatively easy to handle. And this isn't even... This isn't even spawning capture points. Yeah. This is going to be quick. 
They're not even trying to retreat either, which is kind of crazy. Less than a hundred total deployment points, but they're, you know, they're giving it their best. They're at least going to try. They're not going to go down without a fight. It's in their contract. You know, they were paid a lot of money to be here. Might as well go down. Fighting, I guess. Oh, it seems a bit odd. If you guys are going to fight me, maybe, maybe try a strategy that actually has a chance of like, teaming up. Alright, let's uh, back off a little bit. Apparently there's a single wolf way out here. That's weird. I'm not sure how it got all the way out there. You know, it only a single wolf and a, a single wolf and a single omen somehow just basically exited the battle. Yeah, you guys can handle that. I'm gonna go after the big rip. Easy. Now let's see if we can catch these. They don't even seem to be retreating. These guys are committed to the mission. Alright, that's done. All that's left is you. You guys are still fighting, that's fine. another one. Another one bites the dust. Bam, bam, bam. Another one bites the dust. And another one gone. Another one gone. Another one bites the dust. That song is old by now. I, I mean, by this point, even Weird Al's parody, Another One Rides the Bus. Now that, that's, that's old by now. God damn. It's almost like time moves forward whenever time passes. Like if 60, like for every minute that passes, a song ages 60 seconds. Are they done? What are you guys doing? Where are you guys going? All right, you guys surely are gonna, yeah, there we go, with allies. I mean, it's still a pretty small fort. Like, the, the Paragons just aren't going to see any action at this rate. Heck, they might as well be just taking a vacation. I imagine all the crew is just kind of, like, hanging out in their bunks. You know, they got the popcorn out. They got the battle plastered up on the on the full-screen hollow display. And they're just like, yeah. Let's watch the... Yeah, let's watch the boss beat him up, huh? Show them how a real high-tech fleet handles things. Look at those tri tac losers. They don't even know how to use their own technology. They ain't got a clue. They must have amnesia. They forgot that we him. They forgot that the boss is him. I mean, that, that kind of statement, like, I'm him. I mean, that's basically the main character. That's basically the player. It's just like... In this universe, I'm him. Gargoyle even calls us radioactive. Or no, he says that we're hot, but not radioactive, that's right. Radioactive is when it's too much. Yep, there's the Harbinger doing Harbinger things. That could be worse. Actually, that's kind of a... It's kind of an interesting balance consideration. How much fun would it be to fight Harbingers if they were good at their job? It wouldn't. That's the answer. It would not be fun. But then the problem is, when you have them as a player, and they're only good in player hands, and not in your in your in the rest of your fleet, eh, I don't know, it's a bit rough, isn't it? I mean, it's not like they're... If you babysit them with commands, they're pretty good, though. I think I mentioned that last time. And if not, I'm mentioning it now. They are pretty good if you kind of babysit them and pick their targets for them. They're, they will delete small targets very quickly and efficiently. 
more so than the frigates. They've got that extra... Ooh, nice shot. They've got that extra firepower that lets them pull it off. And they've got this. They've got more speed than a Doom and more firepower than an Afflictor. And that lets them hunt down frigates and destroyers and delete them faster than anything else. But they can also get themselves into a situation where their hard flux is maxed out and they just kind of can't can't escape or really do anything. They just get... Life just sucks. Alright, I'm gonna let you... Did you just fire double reaper at that thing for some reason? Yeah, I'll let the AI handle that. You just do a good job there. And by do a good job, I mean use your system to chase it down instead of letting it escape. There we go. Okay. So we've got an Aurora down here. Well, well, I guess we'll kill this first, and then we can all gang up on the Aurora. I bet you have systems expertise. No? Field modular? No, you don't. Well, I guess that sucks to suck, then. Because uh, you're not escaping. Sorry. Maybe next time try optimizing your builds a little better. You freak. Have you have you not read the forum posts? Don't you know the meta? Don't you understand? Actually, officers can't get systems expertise until level four, anyways. And these guys are only level three. I mean, that's what you get for bringing level three officers. You can't even get some of the most important skills for your ships. Cleaned out. Nice. Okay, so they're still coming. I think there's one ahead of us. We've got two here. Oh, so this one... We can just do this. Okay, excellent. I wonder how... Do I have to defeat literally all of them? It's starting to look like it. Uh-huh. Yeah. It still says they're strong. One of them got ahead of me, I believe. This is a bit odd. It's hard to tell if I'm making progress here. I just want to fight the fleets and get this over with. Where are you guys? What'd you run off to? Face me, coward! Alright, well, I guess we're just going to go home and wait for them to show up. Not the ideal solution, but it is a solution. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Trade fleets. Because while we're going to trade, while we're raid you, we're also going to trade with you. We're just not going to raid our own trade convoys, of course. Hmm. What an interesting strategy. Okay. Yeah. Let's drop this off. Let's sell this on the open market and this. It's not a big deal. Let's grab more supplies once again. Grab more fuel. Excellent. We go over here. We can repair you again. Yeah, and I guess at this point we just wait for them to show up. Oh wait, was that them? Was that what that was? Or was that a big patrol of my own? Yeah, that was one of my own patrols, okay. I mean, it still says outmatched, strong, likely nine fleets, but I just defeated a bunch of guys. This is going to take them 13 days to arrive. It's a friendly mercenary company. Does not look like... Yeah, Tactistar would be a different thing. Would say Tactistar. Hey, look at that. We've already gotten him up to size 5. 
Oh. Excuse me. Okay. So. We'll add a new industry. Commerce. Because that sh won't disrupt the Lytic majority. And then it's only once we get to size 6 that I'll build the mines. Send them to the mines. The strike points I'm sitting on. Three. Okay. Yep. So. How about you? You're 66%. Well, depending on f how fast this grows, the Lytic majority, it actually might reach size 6 first. Which would be funny. That would be amusing. <clears throat> Alright. Well. I guess we just wait. Six. Yep, there's one of them. You are dead. Okay. That reduced colony crisis is not really what I was aiming for here. Okay. Important. Yeah, it still says that they're on their way. Oh, I guess that's a pretty significant attachment, isn't it? I'm seeing all kinds of cruisers. We've got Champion, we've got Eagle, we've got Eradicators. Medusas, Omen, Omen plus a Vanguard in the same fleet, interesting choice, and a Paragon. So I guess this is the other, there is two fleets with Paragons, is what it looks like. And those are the main fleets. Alright, well, once again, you guys, look, this is on you guys for splitting up. Alright, I did not bungle this operation. I, it was not my master plan that screwed you over. This was your own incompetence. You have nobody to blame but yourself. You should have thought about that a little more before tangling with the Bingus. Alright, kill. Mm hmm, kill. Alright, well, let's try taking these on. Yeah, let's bring ourselves over this way. Huh? Now let's back off. It's enough harassment for now. Heavy needlers. Uh, I don't like this concave formation I'm walking into, actually. Excellent. That's one down. They managed to capture this point somehow. Oh, they probably... Yeah, they probably have the electronic warfare skill, if I had to guess. Well, let's kill you. Or not. Let's, uh, let's not die. Yeah, change your plans. Okay. I see the problem here. Which is, uh, trying to take a Paragon head on. Let's see what loads out you. Oh, you've got double phase lance. That's, uh, actually reasonable. I like how he jumped out of the way of the Reaper, but then the Eagle still got hit anyways. Yeah, with both of you working together, I can't really find an opening here. Alright, let's uh, let's actually drop these. We don't want to get distracted by them. They're not that important at this stage. Let's see if we can get a flanking maneuver going. Oh, good shot. The AI Fury actually landed a Reaper right behind its shield arc. Not bad. Oh. Yeah, that's all that's left is you, you. I could actually take care of that myself. Yeah, see, this build makes more sense. It's got double tack lance instead of tack lance plus plasma. Not that it matters. Say goodnight. 
your dreams are over. No, wait, if they're saying goodnight, then it means their dreams are beginning. I don't think this metaphor makes sense. It's time to say goodnight. Your REM sleep won't be, won't be happening for several hours. And therefore, you will not be dreaming. And also, I'm just going to kill you before you reach the point that you do start dreaming. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Yep, there we go. Now we we win, right? And they just give up. This is the point where that happens. What? Okay, so we defeated mercenary sent to attack you. Trade fleet ships destroyed. It's got its own separate progress bar. That's kind of cool. Let's see, 150. Bounty posted. Several bounty hunters were recently... I see. So, once you get halfway there, they hire bounty hunters to get... Okay, so this... Huh, this feels a lot more... fleshed out than the other ones. Because the other ones are just like, they send... Well... The hegemony one, they do they do have to go through multiple stages. But it feels like each of them goes... For the most part, they just like do the thing and then it's over. But for Tritachion, it's like it's, it's like a whole thing. Interesting. Okay. Which I'm guessing means that if I did some of those other things... I could have been ra doing these, like raiding them, disrupting their industries, and destroying their trade fleets. It looks like I could have been doing that earlier, and that this would pop up earlier before the crisis actually triggers. Which, unfortunately, kind of is a problem, because it means that they work very differently. Right? Because the other, the other colony crisis, you actually don't want to... Huh. The other colony crisis, destroying their fleets will give you... A, you know, reduced progress. So you kind of don't want to do that because you don't want to reset the crisis because you have to deal with the crisis in order to deal with the event. But Tritachion seemingly has its own progress bar. So that's a cool idea, but it just means that it works completely differently from the other ones. My expectation was that you needed to have them trigger the Tritachion crisis here if you wanted to progress the Tritachion crisis. But actually, it looks like you don't need to do that at all. Whereas for the other crisis, you do have to do that. So, I like this for the Tritachion, but maybe this should be visible even when it's at zero progress. Once Tritachion starts competing with you, maybe, or maybe once you talk to your contact and ask him what to do, then this should pop up instead of waiting until you actually gain some points. A little more transparency here would be nice. And it would also be really cool if every crisis had its own, like, separate progress bar. Like this. Although, it's probably not necessary for all of them. Some of them are meant to be simpler. Fair enough. Okay, so yeah, this is a bit weird. But okay, I guess I'm going to take some marines, I'm going to raid some of their planets, maybe destroy some some of their stuff. Yeah, it looks like you can just attack the commerce raiders, and that will do this. Huh. Okay. Well, at least I got to see what the high-level crisis tier fleets looked like. So there's that. Yeah, and you still have to deal with the bounty even if you actually finish it. But yeah, this this is really cool. I then the artwork for this is really cool. All right. Well, I'm gonna go grab my marines, and we're gonna go get down to business, do a little negotiating. You know, negotiating at the point of a gun, but. You know, that still counts.
At least that's what I'm told. Yeah, I don't, don't need that. Okay, drop that off. Sell that. And storage. Wait, hold on, no, we'll do this. There we go. Just like that. Okay. And do I want to take cores? I could take out, like, I could definitely take out the patrol HQ one. And I believe the baseline, I think the baseline reputation gain. I think it's one for, oh wait, isn't it five for alpha cores? And then tripled for the church, so it's like 15. So I would only need like two of them, I think. Because if I'm getting like plus 15, then it's very tolerable. It's like, ooh, I'm losing a bit of, like, a 10,000 credits a month. Ooh. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not concerned about that. So we'll just take a couple of these. And hopefully... Let's see what's our... We're at minus 29. So if it is 15, like I think it is, that'll get us up to positive 1. And hopefully that's good enough. Because that's exactly where I'm going. I'm going there right now. Hmm. You know, in my next run, since I'm planning to use Midline as the backbone of my fleet, maybe I should just join the Persian League when that comes up. Maybe I should. I know most players are like, no, I'm, in I'm an independent Starfarer and I don't need no Persian League. But it could work. I could try that. You know, of course, I'm still going to fight them first to try to negotiate a better position. But I could end up just joining them. It would be thematically fitting. And I, I want to see what it looks like. What happens once you join? Can you leave? Alright. AI cores... Yes, it is 15 points. It's time to say goodbye to our beloved blue bleach balls and say hello to plus 30 points with the church. You told me to find redemption. Mm hmm. Okay, so. How about now? Uh huh. Does it need to be higher? We're not inhospitable anymore. Oh, this is just annoying. Why can't I spend a story point to get past this guy? I guess this this part of the quest line is just that important that you can't do that. That must be the case. Okay, well. Sucks to suck, I guess. Let's move on. At least not being inhospitable with the church means that now we can... Now we can actually use their markets to buy stuff. So that'll be nice if I find myself needing fuel again. When I'm on one of their systems. Maybe I can do some of their bounties or something. Something like that. Mining station. Okay. It's a lot of Sindri and Dictai missions, actually. Oh, the church. Uh, sure. Let's grab that. That is... way out there. I think I'm gonna pass. Mm, Tritachion? Probably because I'm in their space. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bounty, 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 bounty. Mm-hmm. That is... I'm sorry. What, what planet is this? Pulls up display showing command and control in the Esconia star system. Ah... Uh, 
Are you asking me to blow up the orbital station for Sidria? Yeah, we're going to say, okay, what's a different target? More challenging. Once again, not quite what I'm looking for. I guess it's down to... Like, I assume that he can do the, the, the bounty. I assume... So, I, I really think it's down to RNG here. I would be really disappointing if it turns out that he specifically can't for whatever reason. But okay. I guess we're doing this now. It'll go... I mean, this is just so easy. I, I really don't want to do that. Let's grab this mining station. We'll go grab this. Is there any gates up here? Let me have a look. No. So I'm just going to use the good old regular old engines. Let's do that. Just a nice little trip through hyperspace. Just listening to the classic hyperspace soundtrack. Actually, it'd be kind of funny if the in-game music for hyperspace is just something that it's like some kind of spacer ritual that, oh, we need to play this music in order to be safe from the hyperspace demons. Or something like that. They do have a lot of weird superstitions. So it wouldn't be too crazy. Or too far off. Okay, so 6%, 68%, 69%, 68%, 69%. I guess the rounding is a little different. Whatever... Whatever they're using for routing. Maybe this always rounds up, whereas the other one rounds to the nearest whole number. That's possible. Almost there, buddy. Almost there. Actually, how many? Four. Alright. Yeah, I can't even use a start point to bypass this guy, so... I mean, something's up. Maybe I need to visit the Dockside Bar on the same planet. That might be part of it. Hey, a research station. Not what I was looking for. But I will take it. Alright, go. Go, go, gadget. Omen spam. I should really get some more intense battle music, so that way fights like these are even more comedically one-sided than they are already. You know, if you throw in, like, doom music when you've got a bunch of omens shooting at these things, that would be... That'd be a nice little tonal mismatch. How do you even miss that? Were you paying attention? Yes. Strip them of their ability to move and fight back before you strip them of their dignity. Strip them of their dignity before you kill them. That's how you send a message. Uh-huh. 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 Yep. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I think I have a place that's just right for those. Actually, did I get a new... No, those are blueprints I already have. Okay. But if I go back to Thunderlord Sky Throne, there's only organics. We can put the soil nanites here. Get up to a solid 13 units of food without even having an AI core here or improvements. I guess that means we could go up to 15 if we got another alpha core, slapped it in there, spent story points on it. 15 units of food would be pretty crazy. Not that it would actually earn you too much more. Mining. Asteroid. Okay. Does it say field? Asteroid field. Yeah, not an asteroid belt. An asteroid field. Which means probably this. And there's a gate here, too. Damn, that is convenient. I like that. Uh-huh. I'm not seeing it here. Oh, it could be this other asteroid field down there. That, that could be it. Well, I'm going to go check out this sensor contact first. Uh, orbital habitat. Okay, so we've got we've got the full trio. We've got the mining station, the habitat, and the research station. 
And as usual, the research station gave us something pretty good. The orbital habitat, not so much. One of these things is not like the others. One of these things does not belong. Yeah, we'll grab that gate in a second. Asteroid field, and there it is. Mining station. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep. That's a lot. I'm not going to need those. But those I could use. Turning those into the church should be a little bit more progress towards what I assume is the objective here. Okay. So that's taken care of. And this is for the church, so that'll give us a little bit more reputation. Might as well take care of that. And then we can come back, take the gate straight over there. I'll check the I'll check the dockside bar in case that's where I'm supposed to be going this whole time. That's possible. More cash. Excellent. Let's get out of here. Alright, let's try to speed run this. I don't want to spend too much time on a boring old survey mission. Excellent. What kind of planet are we looking at? Rocky and stable. So not this one. It's probably... Oh, it's right here. Excellent. And there's pirates that I don't care about. Wait, really? It's There's ruins here. No. This one. There we go. Yeah, there's pollution on this one. Okay, that makes sense. Might as well get you, since we are right there. Let's get out of here. It's time to move it, move it. Call me King Julian, the way I'm moving, moving this dough. Oh, that is... Whoa. That's a bit much. It's a little too much move and move. It's, we moved it, we move it, moved it a little too much. I'm trying to say that in the past tense is a little hard. Alright, and let's... I'm not even chasing you. Paranoid little bastard. Okay. Hesperus. Hespericus. It's green like the asparagus it is. Let's just get this over with. You also want the equipment cache out there. Hmm. Interesting. Very intriguing. Okay. Oh. I... Really... Because I used the gate system and forgot to turn on my transponder when I went through it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Whatever, man. Alright, let's try going to Dockside Bar. Oh, is this what I was supposed to be doing the whole time and the dropping off the Alpha Cores? Well, to be fair, dropping off the Alpha Cores, increasing our reputation, should reduce hostilities with other factions. Unless that only counts for being at war and not for inhospitable. Which it might. I mean, it is nice to have high reputation with everybody, though. So we'll just call it... We'll just say that it was worth it and move on. Take a shuttle down to the main concourse and quickly find a likely-looking establishment. You duck past notices encouraging temperance and restraint as you enter the bar. Well, that's a bit of a contradiction, isn't it? Why, I mean, not not entirely, but why even build a bar in the first place if you're going to say, hey, temperance, abstinence, restraint. It, you can drink, but only a little bit. All right. Someone is playing a stringed instrument in an alcove. A row of handwork sa samovars suggests that tea is served as often as the weak grain brew favored by the crew of rough-looking laborers at the bar. Many of the patrons at tables or booths seem to be off-worlders, 
or local unbelievers huddling in the closet analog to a den of sin that can be found. A shift worker in a utilitarian jumpsuit, a few burns and patches, approaches the bar beside you. They meet your eye. Someone would like to talk to you. Set you on the right path, if you please. Follow me. Sure. Uh-huh. Enter. Oh. Howdy. I remember what I did for you. It is a storage room. A couple of folding chairs are set at a drooping table. Bright patterns crawl across an old lighting tube. A pot of tea steams between two simple cups. You recognize the path they're sitting in one of the chairs. Well, if it isn't Captain Paul Bingus, I am so glad to see you again in good health by the grace of sweet Lud. Captain, I must declare that it is grim tidings indeed that bring me to begging an audience with you. We have seen you operating a truly unholy creation, a ziggurat-class starship, for it is born of the womb of Tritachion greed, the product of meddling in places that human hand ought not reach. Now don't look surprised, Captain. There are many eyes and ears upon the daisy that stands so tall as you do. And you do stand tall indeed. What are you asking? Oh, Captain, I'll return to your question in just a moment, for I've quite entirely forgotten my manners. I brought some fine tea, grown by a good friend. Won't you sit and share a cup with me? Do sit. You're my guest here in this humble place, and it would be rude to poison a guest. <laughs> and a sin, besides. Sit and drink, sure. Do be careful. It is hot. Now, where was I? Oh, right. I am asking you to open not only your eyes, but your heart. I know. It is a sugary turn of words, but Lud taught us to be true in our speech in the hope that our soul might shine through the clouds. It's pretty poetic. I am concerned for your soul, Captain. The end times are upon us, and it is up to each of us where we look for guidance. Is it in the power of Mammon, a promise of gold and hollow power? You carry the fruit of Moloch's tree in your fleet, Captain. What will grow from its seed, I wonder, and I fear. This is, as foretold by Lud, another sign of the apocalypse. I see what you think upon your face. Was not the collapse of the Domain's gates the apocalypse? Yes and no. It was merely the beginning. The ocean shall shatter and hang in the sky. Mixed with blood, the locusts will hatch from the temple of the adversary. The Doombringer shall step through the empty door and... It goes on like that. I do say the poetry of the word takes me, but I shan't bore you if it isn't your interest. All was foretold by Lud. It's written here. The question for us, poor and flawed children of creation, do we look to the light for guidance? What's your point? I am perhaps not doing so good a job at this as I had prayed. Let me speak with absolute candor, Captain Paul Bingus. This ziggurat, what it will bring, it is my greatest fear and, I confess, my greatest hope. It is clear to me that you hold the tool of the adversary that will end the world. I am not asking you to set it down exactly. It is a tool of evil, yes. But imagine a small arm set within reach of a child. I am asking that when it, time, when it comes to time for you to decide what you will need to do, you will follow the path of light. What does the path of light even mean? His eyes open. You must learn, my friend. The path, the word is the path, and the path is the light. Once you see it, you will have no need of questions. They call me a murderer, a terrorist, but no doubt dwells in my soul, Captain. None at all. I should probably go now, Captain Paul Bingus, before the local security forces wake up. 
Thank you for your time. Until our paths cross one more, choose the light. Yeah, I'm not going to sell them out. I'm I'm a, I'm kind of a I'm I'm kind of two timing things in this playthrough. I used the tritac to kind of bootstrap my income, but I'm also sympathetic to some of the the pathers, if not an, if not fully a pather, or the or not fully a convert to the church. I mean, with a voice like that, how could anybody hate Cotton? You know, he's just such a likable guy. Talk to the deacon captain. Oh, okay. So I could try bribing somebody? Uh-huh. What if I just give you more cores? Does that get me good enough? Uh-huh. What if I have a commission? Currently only hostile with the pirates. This is good. Okay. Is that what that is? Do I need a commission? Yes. I shall order traffic control to give you permission to land, Captain. May your spirit find that for which it searches. Thank you. Now we're going to visit the shrine, finally. He nods an acknowledgement, nothing more, then terminates his end of the comm link. Traffic control gives you its blessing, so to speak, and your shuttle begins its descent to the cold and unforgiving surface of Hesperus. The planet is riven by glaciers like a network of scars on the battered hide of a fossilized monster. The flight path takes your shuttle into a great canyon of canyons, filled with chaos of ice and stone. The shuttle banks into an off-branch. The ridges of dark rock loom larger. Now and again you spot the crumbling remains of industry, and among the occasional lights of a night-chartered enterprise or monastic community. Around one last turn of the canyon, the shrine complex appears, a bright spire of habitats, towers, and masts rising from the misty remains of a titanic atmospheric processing plant. Your trained eye spots the likely positions of heavy weapon emplacements, two clean cliff faces at convenient angles, the suspiciously level floors of certain hanging valleys. The landing bay antechamber is a baroque gothic militant display of post-industrial salvage. Dead suits of power armor stand at attention, weapons proudly displayed. Glowing between the rivet-encrusted arches are scenes of battle and martyrdom, done up in mosaic panes formed of fractured gems. Structural diamond and colorful lenses recovered from mining lasers or reactor inspection ports. The gallery is filled with parties of Lytic pilgrims dressed in traditional hand weave meeting the shrine attendants. At your request, the attending subcurate leads you through a brief ceremonial hand washing, then down a long gallery. The flow of the curate's robe doesn't quite touch the floor, a welded field of armored plates weathered into intricate patterns by the varied atmospheres of a score of worlds on which the knights have fought and died. Niches along the walls are occupied by empty helmets. The shrine is a grand tomb set in an enormous air shaft. The industrial viscera has been transformed into a baroque sculpture of thousands of edged weapons, aligned like feathers of a wing, rays of gleaming serrated metal boldly thrust in killing arcs through the vast space. In the center, surrounded by a galaxy of flickering candles, lie the lead-lined caskets of a squad of martyred knights. The manner of their deaths, the subcurate explains in reverent whispers, left their bodies unidentifiable and infused with radioactive material, which could kill a, a direct observer even to this day. You're left in a prayer niche to contemplate the horror. The next dish over, a young knight initiative gives you a challenging look. His head is freshly shaved. He must be very new to the order. You are not a knight. Nor one of us. Not really. Why are you here, spacer? I came here, perhaps, to find that out. Your introspection seems to throw the initiate off. You can see the thought pro work across his face. Are you making fun of me? But it is quickly dismissed. 
and you're not and you are fired filed under not a threat. He nods brusquely, then returns his gaze to the lead coffins. I'm supposed to contemplate their sacrifice. Horrible way to die like that. You're a spacer, right? Ever seen that happen to anyone? So there's yes and no lie. So I guess we have seen people die in similar ways to these knights. That's a, that's a canonical part of our background. He stares at you for a moment and slowly returns his gaze to the radioactive martyrs. Well, that's interesting. Subdued chanting warped by the strange geometry of this cultic industrial space blends with the air cyclers. The candles burn clean and bright, gleaming off the multitudes of bladed facets adorning every surface of the shrine's interior. A monument to sacral bloodshed. All right, well, we've got one place left to go. I think this is the first time I've ever actually commissioned by the church. And of course, it's not because I actually want to be here. It's because I'm doing a quest. We're just doing a little bit of a quest. No trolling involved. Can you believe that? I scarcely believe it myself. What are you burning from? Relax. Take it easy. Actually, where would I want to jump? Here? There we go. This should be the... Yeah, there we go. Save ourselves a little bit of time. Your shuttle descends towards verdant continents crowned by lethargically churning storm systems. The orbital, laser, the orbital burn lasers flicker from the sparks of Jangala Station, invisible until they cut lines of plasma through the atmosphere. You pass through blinding cloud cover, the light taking on a slightly sickly green hue. Your viewport is streaked with marching droplets of spore-laden water as the shuttle slows down to softly onto the landing pad, nearly lost to the overgrowth of Jingalan forage foliage. Mm -hmm. One of the shrine's attendants instantly recognizes that you're not one of the usual pilgrims and intercepts you, making remarkable speed despite wearing awkward-looking novices' robes. How may we assist you? I'd like to visit the shrine. You are led past heavy curtains which mute the murmur of pilgrims and shut out all artificial light. Pilgrims kneel in the shrine chamber, silhouetted before the glowing panes to without light by that sickly yellow-green cloud cover. Beyond you see the statue garden, the forms blister with growths, crawling with tendrils, sprouting fruiting bodies of xenolife. Among them are the pilgrims, exposed in only light robes, easily overtaken by over the overgrowth. At their feet, covered by a quilt of mosses and mycelium or alien equivalents, are bones. I, wait, hold on. I believe that I've read all of that before, the first time I visited. So, does that complete the quest? I think so. Return to the sh Oh no, I was supposed to go to Gilead, not Jingala. I'm a fool. I went to the wrong place. For some reason I starred that one because I thought that was the... No, yeah, I was just visiting the same shrine that I've been to already. But I guess it's fine. That'll, uh, people who missed the, the me visiting that shrine We'll be able to see it along with all the others, since they're all going to be in the same video. I'm going to need a few supplies, to be honest. Alright, let's get this over with. Seven million credits. Now ain't that a lot of cash. Yeah, let's buy some supplies first, and some fuel while we're at it. 
And we'll sell a bunch of this crap. Uh huh. Just keep 25. It's a good number. Keep 150. It's a good number. Okie dokie. Let's sell these to the pirates so that they can have a little fun with some new toys. Yes, okay. Deorbiting to the surface of Gilead is overseen by the Knights of Blood. Their traffic control is characteristically strict. Your shuttle queues behind a flotilla of lumbering transports and haulers. The face of Gilead is filled with green continents, seeded with earth life by spore ships, and climate stabilized by Eridani Utopia's vast terraforming machines. Then Lud came and the faithful turned the world into a garden wilderness of astounding richness. It is the gem of the Persian sector. Your shuttle receives a ping from traffic control. Permission to descend. The landing bay, one of a score or so allocated to outsiders, is packed with parties of Luddic pilgrims dressed in traditional hand weave led by robed attendants. One such stony faced attendant meets your shuttle on the pad, and with a double glance at a discreet data pad, rapidly stowed in voluminous robes, invites you to follow them. I am blessed, Captain Paul Bingus, to invite you to complete the Pilgrim's Path on this day. How do you know of this? The faithful must know to keep watch for what is coming. Lieutenant smiles, says with a strange look, then almost, but not quite, smiles. I mean not to sound so arcane. It is merely that our church has endured hard times, and may yet again. You think these hard times will come? I pray that they do not. We prepare for if they do. It is a smaller path you are led down. The highway of humanity for the main shrine. This is a smaller, secondary shrine in the lee of a crag dominated by the immense forest. Pilgrims are offered tea, warm water, and ritual washing. The air is filled with sweat, incense, and the scent of pine. A thrum of odd chanting distorted by the breeze lifts and wanes by the whims of the air currents. You see the shrine's curates blessing pilgrims. Soon it is your turn. The curate casts scented drops and says the words, though it is almost a blur. It is strange to have come so far for this. Around you flows a rither of faith and ritual. Your fellow pilgrims have chosen their purpose to pursue, that of Lud's message. In the collective hardship of life in the Persian sector, as in the collective hardship of the pilgrimage, they find a kind of peace and meaning that is abs absent in the hollow left behind by the collapse. You return to your shuttle, taking a final breath of air rich with the exhalations of both the greenery and the mass of humanity. As your pilot swaps off take off pings with traffic control, they pause at an unusual set of navigation instructions which are forward to you. Now retrieve data pad. You're being directed to a landing which serves a huge monastic complex, some sort of church administration center. The local data sphere is not forthcoming on the details. It's difficult to say if this is a security measure or pious neglect. Follow the route. At the landing pad, you are met by a solemn Luddic knight. A knight initiate stands a few paces behind, trying to match the ease and calm of their superior. Captain Paul Bingus, let me speak welcome on behalf of the Church of Galactic Redemption. I extend to you an invitation from the Reverend Archcurate Jaspis to meet and share refreshment. Uh, yes, I'm just not going to say anything. You're led by the night through gardens and the soaring arcades of Ludic Church architecture. Half-remembered dreams of Gothic cathedrals given flight by the material science of the domain. It might be th thought impertinent to mention this aspect of the construction, of course. The night initiate follows behind, footsteps echoing between arch uh, portals. Over slate tiles flecked with glittering pyrite like stars in the night. Does every successful pilgrim get to meet? No, of course not. I'm not going to say anything. You pass through wooden doors and halls carpeted in designs of foliage and fauna, presumably of old earth. A fawn, a whale, hawks and dragons circling in a blue sky wreathed with leaves of ivy, oak, and palm. The Archcreate's office appears relatively austere at first glance, but as your eyes adjust, 
hand-carved wooden paneling emerges, their faces packed with small plants and figures, both human and animal. The room is situated to overlook a private atrium garden. A shaft of sunlight illuminates flowers and catches the softly trickling drops of a fountain. Your Excellency, the knight calls out too loudly for the space and bows to the figure within. The Archcurate Jaspis turns towards you, closing a thick book. Come before me, Captain. I would share with you a pot of tea, and my hospitality... No, I said that wrong. And my hospitality. Knight Alanthus, you have my thank, and may leave us be. I'm, I'm trying to come up with a uh, with a voice for her that's distinct from both Baird and the other church lady, but uh, I don't think I've got anything, so I'm just going to go with uh, old person. You're old, so you're going to sound old. I'm going to try and sound old, and that's about it. Yeah, we're going to sit and have tea. You guys seem to love your tea. She takes the handle of the carafe, carafe of boiling water, and without looking, gaze still unfocused, fills the teapot. She is quite blind, you realize. Let the tea steep. You made the pilgrimage to the holy shrines of blood. You have made affinity with the church and helped compassion for the faithful. Oh, I see. This is going to be the part where they judge your actions throughout the whole thing, isn't it? So you could be rude if you wanted, and then she would call you out at this point. That's kind of clever. I like that design. In my right hand, I hold the hammer, as my left is open for you to take. She says, quoting the, the Book of Lud, The hammer has a place alongside the heart. The office I am entrusted to as need for the service of an actor of means and ability. A hammer... Oh, I see. You remind me of Provost Bart. That would be an interesting thing to say in this context. Don't you have the Knights of Blood for this? She smiles sardonically. You have met the Knights. You know full well that in all manners they will break rather than bend and, the na and name such waste sacrifice. I should not speak to so broadly, however. There is one who was sent to me to serve for his novice ship. He is the one I want you to find. You remind me of Baird. Do you insult me or laud me, I wonder? Anna Heater Baird is a powerful woman, intelligent and proud. She also makes herself habit of knocking upon the doors of demons. Or should I say rather, she sends others to knock in her place. I hold not your work for her against your character. If I may return your Janice-faced compliment, what you have done for Baird may even prove more of your suitability for what is in mind. So you want me to be your hammer? No, my hammer is a humbler being by far than you, but he requires aid in his quest, and for that you might well, you might well serve. Do you understand that I speak not entirely of war and wrath? A hammer may strike subtly, even quietly, if aimed with skill, wisdom, and piety. Captain, allow me to put the matter to you directly. My agent is a novice of the Knights of Blood. He was assigned to my office in order to achieve his knighthood. He infiltrated a cell of heretical militants affiliated with the ill-named Luddic Path. I have not heard from him in some time. It's important. If you accept this task from my office, my assistant will provide you with identity files to aid you in finding my agent. You will also be given a modest retainer to fund your efforts. And more if, well, you can find him. You need not answer now. Pray on the matter, or ponder if that's how you would name it. May Providence favor you with a blessed path. I pray it returns to me with an answer in the affirmative. I have already decided. With such haste, you need not play act with enthusiasm to impress me. My opinion has always held that decisions of great importance should be 
given ample time to steep. Give me now with silence. Yeah, sure. Uh huh. His name is Jethro Born Anew. Get it? Born Anew? That's pretty. I guess that's just part of their tradition in this. in Cycle 206. Just they're, they're pretty on the nose of their last names. He is a late initiate of Novice of the Nolitic Knights. My assistant will provide you with an identity file. Novice Bornanu was infiltrated as cell of heretical militants affiliated... Oh wait, this is... It's been far too long. Chalcedon, in the Kumari Kandam system. He was to join some inner circle of the path. He was to meet with a leader, or some manner of recruiter. Nothing have I heard since. If heretics must die to secure his release, then do what must be done. Their blood will be washed away by that of the innocent, the seas and rivers that these pathers have spilled in the course of their heretical crusade. God will be their judge. You will be paid, of course. My office shall provide you an advance of 25,000 credits with an additional 50,000 upon resolution. Yeah, this is meant to be doing... You're meant to do this much earlier. Is this about Brother Khan? I cannot answer wholly yes or no. At one point it might have been. Now I am not so sure. Tell me more about Born Anew. His is a gentle soul, though rough treated. He was in the house of penitence when his case was brought before me some years ago. Pritison, you would call it. It is my duty, more than simply charity, to review the petition's absolution as my schedule permits. I found in Jethro a bright mind, contrite and eager to learn anew. His crimes were not so great, and his part due more to his desire to please his associates than some inborn malice. I made his repentance my cause for a time, and by its end he took on a new name, and he asked how he could serve. Then I will find Born anew. I pray that you do. May a friendly star light your path. Blessed be your day. All right. Well, so we completed that. Now there's another quest. This one. All right. I was gonna go do this, wasn't I? Uh. Actually, speaking of, it's probably. Now's a good time to resign my commission, isn't it? Yeah, that's fine. We are chewing just fine with that. Okay, so we've done that. We want to do that. We want to deal with this. Apparently there's a lot more that I've got to deal with. Oh boy. Well... To be fair, I did choose to go on this quest, and it is ending up longer than I expected. Now, this one doesn't have a time limit, so I guess I can just come back and do this in a, in a hot minute. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to continue on. I, uh, I don't see myself finishing all of this today. Honestly, this feel I do want to get... I'm, I'm tempted to go grab this right now. But I feel like this is honestly a good stopping point. This, this was mostly about the church. For this episode. For this episode of Dragon Ball Z. Of Bingus... Bingus's Adventures. Well, actually, before I go, why don't I... Why don't I slap on some... Elite skills. Yeah. So you guys all have yours. It's you two who are missing two. So, with that in mind. Hmm, target analysis? Do I want that? Yeah, I guess target analysis, systems expertise is a good combination. More damage, 
and more defense. Yeah, let's go with that. And that leaves me with one, as always. And I think there's no more elite skills to it. Yeah, they all say retrain, so no more there. We all have triple S mods. So all that's really left is to S mod the logistics ships even further and to S mod the ECCM package here. So I think that is a good place to call it for today. And that's about it. See ya.